one of my friends, uh, he was called Alex, he texted back mm -hmm. and uh, he told me uh, he was under the bed and I told him uh, I'm also under the bed, just hang in there, we will get help. And uh, apparently that is the last time I heard from him. Some few minutes later, we had a knock on our door and uh, the man goes ahead and says, Kuna tundani? We kept quiet. So at this point now, it's dawned on us, hey, it's actually happening. Now we were supposed to uh, run in a row and whenever we had gunshots, you were supposed to lie down. So we it was on April the 2nd in 2015 when Gladys was just preparing to go home. But then something happened that early morning, a loud bang, a bang that would change her life forever. We're here to hear that story of a child who was only 18 years when these things happened and how she has covered this journey up to the point where she's here and ready, healed, to share this story. Karibu sana Gladys. Thank you so much for having me. Ah, so um, it's been such a long journey. It's been nine years yes. since that experience. Yes. Um, were you a first year student? Could you kindly, first of all, before we go to where we, you were and what you had gone to do in that school, um, give us a brief about yourself. Who are you and where do you come from? Uh, my name is Gladys yeah. Thu, mm -hmm. and um, I come from Kirinyaga. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's been nine years. Uh, joined campus in 2014, that mm -hmm. is in uh, September. That was Garissa University. Yeah. Yes. What had you gone to do there? What, what course did you take? Uh, so I was, in, I was called by job to do business management, bachelor's in business management, which I later joined, uh, majored in finance and banking. Mm -hmm. So that particular day, you were, you had been, you had just completed your first semester. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take us through the the events of that day. What happened? You went to sleep normally. Were there any issues? Had you experienced any other insecurity issues before this? Um. So apparently, before that, mm -hmm. we used to get a lot of uh, threats mm -hmm. through notes that were being shared around school, but there are times that we would run and go back home. But this time, I remember it was on the 1st of April, so that was Fool's Day. Mm -hmm. So people didn't take it so uh, so seriously. Plus, we were so used to these threats, and it was like any other threat, you know, because the others did not actualize. What so were the threats saying? What that they, they would be attacking. The school? Yes. And uh, actually, the, there was a school nearby that is, uh, t t is it a t teacher's college? Yeah, they also got the uh, the notes, and they took it seriously, and they left. They they left from school. So when the attack was actually hap happening, it's the, they were all uh, not in school. So the previous day, we got the notes. Personally, I didn't get it, but there were people that got the notes, but uh, we didn't take it so seriously. So that was on the 1st of April. So the next day was on the 2nd of April. Everything was okay. So the, on the 1st of April, it was the Easter season, so I called dad and told him I wanted to go and uh, celebrate with them Easter holidays. And uh, he told me that's okay, we can meet tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, because he lived at Mwingi. And uh, coming from Garissa to Kirinyaga, I have I had to pass through Mwingi. Mm -hmm. So I told him to wait for me so that we can come uh, together. So uh, he said that's okay. So I set my alarm at uh, for 30 a.m. so that he can wake up, prepare and all that. Mm -hmm. So then now we are in uh, the 2nd of April. Yeah. So the alarm goes off. And at that point, I'm just lying on my bed, just looking through what's up, who has texted me, who has posted you. what, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at that point, um, I had a loud bang the first time. I didn't pay so much attention to it. So I just asked my roommates, did you guys hear what I had? And they're like, no, we didn't hear. So the second time, there's also a loud bang. And this time I asked them, did you hear again what I'm hearing? They said, yes, oh. we did. But we didn't pay so much attention to it. So at that time, it was now a loud bang. It was a loud bang and it came with a lot of lights towards our hostel window. So at that point, now we knew it's bad. Mm. So we now ran out of the room and at this point everyone in our hostel was outside running. We didn't even know where to go, where to start, you know. And uh, as you know, Garissa, it's a, it's a very hot place. Yeah. 
So most of us were sleeping in um, panties, in areas, some even naked. So actually we had people running without anything. It was <laughs> chaotic. Yeah, it was chaotic. They actually got some lessons from the neighboring people when they uh, ran off. Um, so when um, myself and my roommates, we decided let's do this, let's get back inside and do what? And lock our room. Um, and that is what we did. Mm -hmm. So we went back in and locked the room, which was a very bad idea. From the inside? Yes, from the inside. Mm -hmm. So at that point I was crying and uh, I just picked my, my phone and called my dad and told him, I do not know what is happening. All I can hear is um, gunshots from everywhere. And he was asking me, are you guys striking? And I told him, no, we have not planned on any strike. And he told me, okay, where are you? Told him I'm lying on the floor. And uh, he told me, just uh, stay there. I'm calling you back. Let me confirm what is happening. Yeah. And I told him to send me credit because I needed to update him and I didn't have credits. So he sent me credits and I was just lying there. We were now uh, confused, lying on the floor. And um, so at that point, we, uh, we only had gunshots now back to back, back to back. How many were you in this room at this point? Uh, we were, how many? Four, four of oh, us. Yes. But in our room, we had six. But one of uh, my roommates was in another, in another hostel. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, four, well, the four of us were now lying on the floor. Mm -hmm. And myself, I had this, this kind of hair that you have, it was bulky. So me being on the, uh, on, um, under the bed, it was hectic because the beds were uh, hanging. <laughs> so your hook, it was so uncomfortable. So I just chose to lie somewhere there. Um, so after some time, my dad called back and he told me uh, this he has confirmed that nothing is happening, but just to do, just to be safe, Nikai too, hapo, and uh, I should not move, just lie there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we hear of any knock at the door, we should not open unless they say they are the KDF. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, that's okay. So at this point now, we now hear gunshots, gunshots, gunshots. Uh, fast forward, we, it was not 11 a.m still nothing at this point now we have now uh, ambulances coming in so at this point we wonder how bad is it we now have ambulances so I'm there asking my friends uh, my roommates now uh, do you guys why do you have why do we have ambulances and one of our roommates said I don't know why but I have a feeling we have people dying and getting hurt and I did not want to entertain that thought so I was like no there's no way they are going to harm anyone it's maybe a scare and uh, they'll be gone yeah. were you in communication with any people outside of the hostel within the compound no so the when uh, the attack happened i texted uh, i texted my mom my sister uh and uh, some of my friends yeah. of which they did not pick up and they did not text back but one of my friends uh he was called alex he texted back mm -hmm. and uh, he told me uh, he was under the bed and I told him, uh, I'm also under the bed, just hang in there, we will get help. And uh, apparently that is the last time I heard from him. So fast forward, it was now 11 a.m. We now have ambulances yeah. coming in. At this point now the KDF are now at school. Now we could hear gunshots from this, other s this side and this other side. So it's like they were shooting at each, at mm. each other. So at this point now, um, still nothing there's a, 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 a there's a point um the gunshots died down i remember going to peep through the window and i could not see anyone it was deserted there's no one mm -hmm. so at that point we were tempted to actually leave but when we were just thinking about leaving we had uh, some more gunshots where eh? mm -hmm. just lie we went back and lied down so it was now around uh, 12 ish um Selfish one ish. Um, so how these hostels were built, mm -hmm. we had hostels uh, that were they, they were facing each other. Mm -hmm. So the hostels on the other side, we had a gun we had um, uh, someone knocking on the door, and uh, the man was asking Kuna Tundani. Mm -hmm. So at this point now, it's dawned on us. Hey, it's actually happening. <laughs> we are the next yes. cul uh, culprits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So at this point, I call my dad now crying and telling him, um, out the other side on, of the hostels, I can hear someone knocking and asking, Kama kuna tundani. Mm -hmm. So at that point, dad froze. He didn't like answer like right then. He then told me, um, Kama, Kama watasema ni KDF, and I told my roommates the same. So later on, um, fast forward, when we came home, dad was saying when he was giving his testimony, mm -hmm. at that point when I told him, uh, we have people knocking on the other side, he said that at that point he felt helpless because he could not help me. And at that point he told God, um, mm -hmm. You are the one to protect her and you're the one to bring her safe to me. And uh, yeah, so some few minutes later after the knock on the other side, mm -hmm. we had a knock on our door. And uh, the man goes ahead and says, Kuna tundani? We kept quiet. The first, second time, Kuna tundani? The, we kept quiet and uh, we were just looking at each other. And at that time, he said, Nikki DF, kuna tundani? I was the first to run and open the door. And I was so lucky they were the KDF. Because apparently the same trick was used on the other side mm -hmm. uh, by the uh, attackers. Mm. So I opened the door and uh, they asked me if I'm the only one in. And I told him, no, we have uh, other so people inside. Mm -hmm. So he came in uh, with the other, they were like uh, four or six, I think four or six. They came in and told the other guys, uh, I'm Kenny in KDF. So myself, being um, being in Garissa, I knew that you have for you to walk around, you have to have your ID. So I was just going back <laughs> to look for my ID. <laughs> and the KDF was asking me, I was telling him, and he was like, no, come as you are. Let's go. So we had two KDFs on the at the front, uh, two uh, at the back, and uh, two on the side. Because I was um, live uh, my hostel was at uh, the in um, the first floor. Mm -hmm. So when we got to the stairs, that is when we saw a lot of blood. And at this point, it was like what? Kumbe, eh, a lot has happened. So the KDF led us to a place behind our hostels. And uh, right there, we found some other th some other survivors that had already been saved in our hostel. Mm -hmm. So let me give you a f a f um, more insight on the how the hostels were. Yeah. So we had two years. There was the first year and the second years. It was the first year by then. Mm -hmm. So our hostel, the first year side, mm -hmm. it was near the gates. So when the attackers came in, they started shooting at the uh, watch the watchman, mm -hmm. and then uh, they went to the CU room. So we, our hostel was close to the CU room and uh, the gates. So when they were shooting at them, we had the gunshots first. Oh. So the second year's hostel was a bit far. So by the time they were getting to hear the gunshots, it was too late for them. So most of them already were still inside the hostels. Mm -hmm. So for us, the first years, when we had the, ho the gunshots, most of them uh, ran towards the fence and uh, they jumped through the fence. So what actually saved me, because we came later on to share stories. Um, remember our side, the first years, an a large number of them ran. So the, the people that were still in the hostels, we were very few. So I believe they went through the rooms, they couldn't find anyone. The, f uh, the ground floor, they didn't find anyone. Mm -hmm. So when they got to the first floor, I was in uh, the fourth room from the, fa uh, from the first room. And uh, the second room, there were some uh, students that were there. So they were saying they had the, gun, uh, the attackers shoot in the first room. But after shooting, when they were about to get to the next room, there was a fo they got a phone call. So when they got a phone call, they didn't proceed with their other rooms. So they just went back. So we were just thinking, may, probably the other uh, attackers they were with, maybe they told him, 
ah, there's no one here. Let's just proceed. Let's just go. Yeah. It yeah, it was that close. So if if actually he had moved to the next room and found people, you know, he would have thought probably these there are the, yeah, there are more. So that is what saved us. Mm -hmm. So he actually left. So he didn't continue looking uh, through the other rooms. Uh, so after fast forward, when you got behind the the room, the hostels, the place. yes, mm -hmm. the rescue place. Um, so they asked us, the, that is the KDF, they asked if we have any friends that you know of that are still inside. So I told them I know one. Um, so I told him, uh, so he told me just call him and confirm where he is so that you can go help him. Mm -hmm. So I call Alex and uh, this time he didn't text back, he didn't call back. So, uh, and then the KDF told me it's okay, maybe he's among the people who are still uh, being, rescued. being rescued or maybe he's actually already outside. So uh, around that time they told us now what we will do, we will move to the field side so that we can uh, run all the way to the gates. Um, so between our hostel and the, f and the field, we had a fence, a barbed fence, a barbed wire fence. So they pushed the barbed wire up. So we were supposed to crawl all the way to the other side. So we did that and got to the side, to the field side. So now we were supposed to uh, run in a row and whenever we had gunshots, you were supposed to lie down. So we had these trenches um, in Garissa. Mm -hmm. So we were supposed to get in those trenches and then uh, now run. If you hear gunshots, lie yeah. down. And uh, once they die down, you wake, you stand up now, start running. So it was uh, a distance from where I was, from the field and uh, the gate. It was uh, a distance. So we start. So they said, if uh, now if we say it's time to go, it's time to run, no stopping. So he did that. So one, two, no, it was time to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we ran, we ran. At some point, you you could hear gunshots. You lie down. Um, once they were uh, dying down, you just uh, stand up, start yeah. running. So at some point it got so exhausting for me and I I gave up. I said, I'm not running, <laughs> I'll just stay here. <laughs> so one of my friends was behind. Mm -hmm. He came and found me then, was asking me, what are you doing here? And I told him, ah, me, I'm tired, I'm not running. So he held my hand and told me, no, yeah. I'm Katrinda, we have to go. So we ran with him. Whenever we had gunshots, we would uh, lie down uh, the same, the circle, the circle continued till we got to the gates. How long did this whole process take to run from the rescue center to across the field to the other side? Uh, with the dying down of the gunshots? Let's say 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the gunshots are now back to back. You will hear them just lie down. Mm -hmm. start running to and then it was not a short distance yeah yeah, yeah so we got to the f uh to the gates mm -hmm. where we we had a, a room where the muslims are using to pray mm -hmm. so that is where we got some other survivors from the second year side but from a different hostel mm -hmm. so we were there so happy to see each other asking each other have you seen so and so and uh, yeah so at uh, around that time, there was a government official who came in. And uh, honestly, we were not so happy to see him because <laughs> we didn't understand what he was going to do. We needed more help, not him being there, you know. And um, after some time, uh, we had a kifaru come in. And uh, when uh, the kifaru came in, I remember the second year side was now, held, uh, we had uh, students being held hostage. Uh -huh. And at this point, the sniper was um, shooting at the, uh, the KDF that were trying to uh, move towards them. Yeah, so it was so hard for them to get inside or get anywhere close to the hostel. So the Kifaru was being used now to, you, to help them at least move closer to the hostel. Yeah. So now uh, we had the Kifaru uh, go in. And at this point, now they were now, the KDF were now done saving everyone they could. And uh, everyone that was there, we were told to now uh, board a bus that was outside our school. Mm -hmm. Now we were taken to the KDF's uh, camp. Uh, when we got there, we got to, uh, we were searched and then we were now released to join the others. Mm -hmm. Actually, the people that were now at the KDF uh, camp were even more than uh, them, uh, the number that we, we were. 
So at that point now I saw my other friends. I was so happy to see them. They were all so happy to see me because they thought I was <laughs> among the dead ones. But um, it was a happy moment to be together. Mm -hmm. And at that point we were now sharing our experiences. How did you run? How did you get here? And it was now around four-ish, five-ish. In the evening? Yeah, in the evening. Are you still updating your parents on what is going yes, on? Yes, yes. I've already told my dad that uh, we've been taken to the KDF mm -hmm. camp. And now he's at is now, and my mom too. Mm -hmm. So at this point now, uh, we are now uh, exchanging, t uh, telling each other stories on how we survived. And then uh, at around five, six, that's when uh, the Rekha squad was now getting to school. Yes, six, uh, six hours later. Okay. Not actually six, it's actually more than 12 hours. Mm -hmm. um, reason being, they came by road from Nairobi. You can imagine, by road. Wow. That is from Nairobi to Garissa, that's six hours. So you can imagine the number of people that would have been saved within the six hours or yeah. even mm -hmm. before. Yeah, so they got there, and uh, when they got to the hostel, they didn't even take a long time. The operation was done. Yes. They were so fast, the attackers were killed, and everything was done within a very short period of time. So we were so disappointed because we felt like the response time was so bad. Mm -hmm. If they got there on time, maybe at a two or three hours later, it would have been better, you know, because... Um, on the second side, the side that uh, they had uh, held them hostage, there was one girl who survived among the people that were lying down. Mm -hmm. And she was telling us that the guys, uh, the attackers had a lot of time to kill. They killed and uh, they were now seated down telling stories. Yes, they had all the time. They were actually now waiting to, uh, to get killed because they were done with their mission. Yeah, so they f the, the time that was taken for them to respond to the issue it was it was frustrating and oh so so and um so the at around six now that is when we had the second years that were being saved from now the hostels because some had hid in uh, the room the in the rooms so they were now uh, brought to us at around 6 p.m so at this point i'm now Every time we would get a trip coming in, I'll just uh, run to see if I could see my friend. And unfortunately, I couldn't see him. It was uh, so disappointing. Yeah. And uh, the next time, um, we had uh, people coming from uh, the hospital, the general hospital, because we had people being taken there that were hurt. Mm -hmm. So I would confirm if they had seen Alex. And they would say, no, they didn't see him. So at around now 7 p.m., we now got people coming into the KDF now are giving us the mattresses to lie on mm -hmm. and uh, we had taken our supper and uh, now it was time to, uh, to go and sleep. So as you know, Gary said it's a dry place and uh, dry places we have thorns everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the mattresses were, were a bit old and uh, the thin ones, yeah? Mm -hmm. So when you're lying down, hey, we'll call a dungwa at a weaver. So it was a, a bit hectic. But um, so we lied on uh, the mattresses. By this point, no one could sleep. We didn't, we didn't have any sleep because uh, it's been just, a yeah, it's been a long day, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we spent the whole night storytelling about other things apart from what happened yeah. because it's in the night. And if you talk about such things, it brings a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about a lot, a lot of things outside there. Mm -hmm. So morning came, uh, we asked if we will be taken home and they said no, they still have investigations going on and still confirming if we still have other people in their hostels. Mm -hmm. So uh, morning came, we had our, our, our breakfast. We were just staying there the whole day waiting for feedback and waiting for more people. Mm -hmm. So during the day, we had uh, pictures circulating of the people that, were sh that had been shot in the CU room and um, the people that had died um, in the second year's hostel, the people that um, were held hostage. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine looking at, uh, looking at the pictures, you can see, I know this one, this was called so and so. It was so traumatic, it was bad. Seeing your friends lying down there in, uh, in a lot of blood and lifeless, you know. 
it was bad. We could, uh, people would uh, scream, cry. Mm -hmm. It was bad. At that point, I looked through the pictures. I did not see my Alex, or Alex, <laughs> as people call him. Oh, Alex. Yes. So, so I thought he's not there. Um, at that point, now we don't, we do not know um, the, uh, the mutual friends, uh, our mutual friends. We did not know anywhere he was. We didn't see him there. We yeah. didn't uh, get any information about him. So we just said maybe he's somewhere out there looking for a way to get to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was on now on Friday now. Mm -hmm. So we spent the whole day just uh, storytelling, walking around. And uh, we also got uh, water. Uh, water was brought in for us to take a shower mm -hmm. and all that. And as I was saying um, in TikTok, Nimeshi kama jeshi because ilikuwa mnaogea tu kwa uko uko nje. You know, you know, you're happy to be alive. Yeah, you're happy to be alive. Like you don't care. Mm. Yeah, tukua na letua maji, you just shower in the open. But at this point was now, in, uh, it was now a bit dark. So, yeah. Fast forward in the night, we spent the night storytelling the same. So now it was now on uh, Saturday. Yeah. So on Saturday they tell us that now we can uh, release you guys to go home, but we will not uh, bring you your clothes because they we, ha we have to look through them and have investigations done before we, we have them release. brought to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they told us to now, we, we were now... Um, segmented according to where you live. People from Mombasa, from Embu, from Kirinyaga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had everyone's um, routes. So we were given the NYS buses. And uh, at this point, now I call my dad and tell him now we will be coming home and uh, I will be dropped at uh, this place. Mm -hmm. And he says, okay. So now we leave and uh, that was the happiest moment because we couldn't imagine staying in that place another no. day. Yeah. What was going on through your mind as you're traveling back home? What took us through your thoughts at that point? The whole journey would take about six, six hours. hours. Yeah. Take us through your thoughts at that point. Well, at that point, I couldn't wait to meet my family. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like it was. I, it was just the moment of it was so emotional mm -hmm. to even it was I was so much anticipating to just get to them that is yeah. what I was thinking about mm -hmm. yeah and then you get here yeah mm -hmm. so uh, we got to where we were supposed to be dropped yeah. so I called my dad and he told me that uh, he's already there and uh, I saw him um, him being an African <gasps> dad I had never gotten a hug from him that was the very yeah. first time I got a hug from him and mm -hmm. it was so emotional. My mom, my, uh, there was a friend who, could, who had come in to support my, f my mom and my dad yeah. and my auntie. It was so emotional. We cried a lot and uh, we thanked God. At that point we prayed mm -hmm. and uh, we then left to now come to uh, the house. Yeah. So now at that point, now we are home. And everyone is trying to avoid to talk about the story because they do not want to trigger. trigger. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they did not want to trigger any emotions. But myself, being myself, <laughs> I just want to let it out yeah. to make it feel easier. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just talking, telling them, you know, this uh, this is what happened. There's someone who survived by doing this and this. You know, and. They were just listening. They didn't even ask questions yeah. because they, <laughs> they, they didn't know, know what is safe to talk about. Yes, they uh -huh. didn't know what to talk about or what is okay with me sharing. Yeah, and around that time when we were taking supper, I get a call and uh, th th there's this man, uh, he calls and tells me, uh, Sasa Gladys, um, and they said, I'm uh, in Kopoa, unajua uh, mwiri? I told him no sim jui. Can mm -hmm. oh I need to Alex Jina Ah, mm -hmm. so it's now clicks. Oh it's, it's Alex. Alex. Yes, yes. or oh, Alex now. So now I tell him, yeah, I know him, but I've been looking for him but I do not have any information about him. And uh, I told him and he told me um he's also looking for him but um uh, they've not got any information so that's why he's calling mm -hmm. so he goes ahead and says he'll just call keep calling other people and confirm if they do have any information mm -hmm. 
So I told him, uh, if you get any information, just let me know. And he says, okay, and uh, that's it. So now we go home, and uh, now we go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's now on Sunday. So on Sunday now we leave for church, mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving, uh, because of what God has, had mm -hmm. done in our lives, yeah. So at church, the atmosphere was bad. They cried with me. And I thank, I thank God for the support we got at that time because yeah. it was overwhelming. Uh, then we later I went home. I had a few friends who came in to um, be with me and uh, distract me a little yes. bit, yeah? Mm -hmm. So while we were just there with my friends, uh, storytelling about other things apart from the attack, I get a call now from uh, from the uh, the man that was calling the previous day, mm -hmm. and uh, he was Al Alex's uncle. Mm -hmm. So he goes ahead and tells me, um, "Habari yako, um, kopoa? Umeskia kusu Alex?" And I go ahead and say, uh, "No, sijaskia bado." And he goes ahead. He's not. Ex he's very much excited. Ah, to mempata. I'm like, "Hey, ako api." And he goes ahead and, say, and says, uh, ah, we are Komochari. Wow. It was so shocking. I dropped my phone. And at that point, I was just screaming, mm -hmm. saying, Alex, I'm a kufa. And dad was seated on the balcony. And he came in running. And he was now upset at everyone, thinking they're the ones who told me what is happening. And uh, he he took me he took me to the um, balcony and uh, started comforting me uh, telling me that hajakufa <laughs> but obviously no he's not yeah i know the truth so he comforted me and then when i was now calm he told me now he, i can join my friend so that i can at least relieve and uh, think about something else but so I went back to my friends, but the whole time, all I could look at is our last conversation. And I would ask myself, but the last time it, you told me you were under the bed, then what happened? You know, I didn't like uh, accept that he's gone because from that day on forward, on forward I would think uh, dream of him telling me that he's okay. He's not dead. It's people saying that he's dead, but he's not dead. Yeah, like getting to acceptance that he's actually not there, it was so hard. And so we now fast forward, we went for his burial and uh, my mom was there with me. And it was so sad, but we had to accept it. And uh, yeah, that is it. Have you healed from this whole experience? Because it must have been a lot of trauma that you gathered throughout the experience, throughout the rescuing process, throughout just getting information about your friends. How has this journey been for you? What are the, some of the things that were the hardest to overcome? I can say that I've healed mm -hmm. because if I'm telling you this story without crying right now, I'm at a, a better place. A better place. Yeah. Because back then, we would tell the story crying. Actually, I will not get done with the story to the end, no. Mm -hmm. And uh, what helped is uh, immediately after we left school, we were now um, enrolled in counseling sessions. Yeah. And at first it was hard because you were uh, many of you, so you will feel not okay crying um, when we are um, a bit, a lot of us. But it got, the counsellors were kind enough to let us know that it's okay not to be okay. Mm -hmm. And the more you let it out, the more it, it is uh, going to get better for you. So the first, day, the first day, it was just relaxing. No one wanted to share. Mm -hmm. But as we went on, now we were now sharing. And the more we shared, the more we cried with each other, the more it got better. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, it's got better with time. After we lit, we later joined more university. Some of us and uh, some of uh, some of us went to more university. Some went for um, to further their studies at, at um, Ita in Italy. They got scholarships there, mm -hmm. and some that were badly hurt were now moved to KU main campus. So as we went to more university, we were still in uh, counseling sessions, okay. but. I would say the counselling was not enough 
because for you to heal from such a thing, you have it takes a long time. Of course. Yeah, but you were given sessions for two months, mm -hmm. which was okay at some point, but it was, we did not like fully heal from sure. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the counseling sessions came a long way mm -hmm. and also support from my family. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were always there to show me, to hold my hand whenever I wanted to go to the barrios uh, from my uh, uh, comrades, from our comrades. They will be there to support me, either take me there, either give me financial support. Mm -hmm. They were always there for me. Yeah. And that made it easier. And as you remember, we also left um, school without anything. Yeah. Uh, so, at that point, Kirinyaga University, per se, no, not Kirinyaga University, Kirinyaga County, mm -hmm. did help because they held a fundraising for us, oh, wow. the victims, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were given some cash to go have clothes and, uh, yeah, they gave us cash to shop for clothes and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the support from uh, the county, from family, from the counseling sessions, that is what made us better. What would you say was the toughest hurdle to overcome? Were you able to sleep well at night? Would you? What, what was the toughest um, challenge to overcome? Sleeping at night was it was hectic for me because I remember there was this there was this one night I was sleeping alone, and waking up I found my mom sleeping next to me, and I was like, I when did you come? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize you were sleeping next to me. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So at this point, she told me that she had me speaking, um, or rather talking in my sleep and in a lot of distress. Oh. And that is when she came to join me in, uh, in, uh, in my bed. But yeah, as I told you, I was having nightmares from time to time. Yeah. Uh, being in an open area, it was also traumatic for me to be in a place that we are uh, a number of us to be in a crowded place. yeah in a crowded place it was bad and also listening whenever i had sirens ambulance sirens it was bad i would break down so bad mm -hmm. and also if i had bangs from anywhere it was bad yeah so sleeping being in open areas and also being in closed places, I had to go looking for entrances and exits and also look for a place I can probably hide mm -hmm. if anything happens, yeah. How has that been now? Are you feeling any better? Have things gotten a bit better now? Yeah, it's a bit easier now. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, right now, if I hear the ambulance sirens, that's okay. For the bangs, that's okay. But at some point, if I hear bang, some, at some point it's... It still triggers Yeah, something. it triggers something. Mm -hmm. But being in open areas, that's okay for now. But in areas that I'm, it's enclosed, they have to look for e exits and also entrances and also where to hide you or where to... That. Yes, I still do that. Yes, I still do that. Do you ever... Because when people go through such a uh, traumatic experience and you're a team of people, you are friends, some of you lose lives and some survive, some sustain injuries, and some, you know, come out of their alive with their health. Do you experience um, what is called survivor guilt? Yes, I do, mm -hmm. a lot. But I encourage myself and say, it's God's plan. Yeah. And God had a purpose for us who survived to sure. survive. Mm -hmm. And it's just unfortunate we had to lose a number of souls. Yeah. But I just encourage myself because every time I think about it, it really makes me so sad. And yeah, I feel sorry for the families that lost their loved ones. Yeah. How is life now? How are you waking up every day? What's, what do you look forward to? What gives you strength to even hope for a better tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Uh, me being a mom now, uh, mm -hmm. what pushes me is my son. I really want to give him the best life and I also want him to feel, you know you were raised in, a, in an environment where you're told you have to be okay, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I want him to know that it's okay to be vulnerable yeah. and it's okay to be emotional, to show your emotional side. 
and as well as uh, I also want a good life for myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to live the purpose because I believe I I survived for a reason, and I really want to live the purpose and as well as um, g g uh, leave an impact, a positive impact in other people's lives. So mm -hmm. that if I live, because any time I can live, I'll have, um, they'll have something to say about me. Yes. yes. Um, right now, you have already graduated from Moy University. Tell us about the course that you took there. Where are you now in terms of employment? What do you see yourself doing in the near future? Uh, I did bachelor's in business management, okay. which I majored in banking and finance. And currently, I'm doing CPAs as I wait for um, employment. Okay. So right now, in regards to uh, pro, um, work, mm -hmm. I'm not working right now. I'm currently looking for a job. Okay. Yeah. So if anyone, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> if anyone is interested mm -hmm. in uh, <laughs> with uh, in finance and banking. I'm the, car and the I'm the person to call. <laughs> <laughs> and how can those people find you? Do you share your email address or your phone number? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my phone number is uh, 0703996259. And my email is uh, gladys 96 at gmail.com. All right. There's a message you might have for families of your friends and for your fellow survivors who might be watching this from anywhere in the country. What is this one thing you would want them to know from you? Uh, first and foremost, to the survivors, to my fellow survivors, mm -hmm. I from the t from uh, the post that I posted on TikTok, I've seen comments of people saying how some were so traumatized that they didn't go back to school. Some were um, in a point of losing their minds. What I can tell them is God has a purpose for you. And uh, it's okay not to be okay, and it's okay to let it out. So if by now you've not healed, it's okay. We do not have a timeline for when you'll heal. Mm -hmm. So just seek help, get help from where you can, and uh, make sure that you leave the purpose. Do not just sit there and uh, just um, be a victim and try to victimize yourself. It's okay, you are a victim, but it's time to just let it go and uh, heal from it. And from the people that lost their loved ones, from the comments I got a lot of people saying, we lost a sister, we lost a, we lost a friend. And what I can say is, um, I'm so sorry for making you li relieve the emotions again by seeing the posts, but I believe God will restore what you lost. He's, um, he's a God of restoration and whatever you lost, you will sure find it. If you've not f found it yet, it, it is in the way. And may the departed souls keep resting in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Gladys, for allowing us to walk this journey with you from the moment where you find yourself in a helpless situation to the point where God literally saves you and brings you back to your family safely. We are happy that you've used this opportunity to even encourage other people out there who might have gone through the same experience that they do not know where to go. So at least seeing you strong, sharing your story, can encourage them also to know that this is not the end. And for you, we are wishing you all the best. Thank when you. you come back here again, we want to see a CPA, Gladys, <laughs> doing great things in this country. Amen. <laughs> it's been nine years, and Gladys has overcome, bit by bit, every day, a challenge to get to terms with the experiences she underwent. And right now, today, she's boldly sharing that story with us and encouraging fellow students who went through the same experience, telling them that this is not the end. And to families who lost their loved ones, we are saying sorry from Tuko family. May those souls rest in eternal peace. And those survivors who are out there and they are not um, willing to continue with their lives or they are just losing hope, please stand up, rise up, and move on. We're here to walk this journey with you. You can reach out to us. You can reach out to Gladys to help you walk this journey with you because we're here together to move forward. And uh, thank you so much for staying with us till the end of the show. My name is Yvonne Kawera. See you next time.